Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday evening, December 30th, and we are in the midst of a developing, exciting, and active weather pattern and the first extreme winter weather event for here in the Midwest, especially in the Great Lakes here in the Chicago area, for this upcoming weekend, the first of the season. Uh, major New Year's storm expected on January 1st. In fact, a record snowfall is currently in the forecast. Highest snowfall amounts that have ever occurred here in Chicago on January 1st is actually only five inches, so it's not going to take much to beat that. And ingredients are certainly looking like they are getting ready uh, for a major winter storm here in the Midwest, which is defined as six inches of snow or more. Now, if you look at the number it doesn't feel as impressive as the look of the weather map and therefore we're going to stay away from the numbers for now maybe at the end we'll discuss some of the numbers of the snow and we're going to just discuss the weather map at the moment because there's a lot more potential than what the numbers indicate at the moment so we have on the weather map a high pressure subtropical high pressure system off in the southeast part of the United States actually it's off of the coast and and it's also an area of high pressure over in the Gulf of Mexico. Unseasonably warm and humid air is currently in the southeast and will be moving into the mid-Atlantic area. This is record warmth. Temperatures are expected in Baltimore to go into the low 70s on Shabbos. But listen to this. The high temperatures might not be occurring until the nighttime. High temperatures, low 70s, that's going to be occurring after sunset Saturday night. Saturday night, low 70s in January 1st. Uh, is that even, yeah, January, uh, that's the beginning of January already. Low 70s in the middle of the night. That's that's July warmth, by the way. July warmth and the humidity is going to be way up there. Dew points in the low 60s, certainly record humidity. Records also be broken for the warmest overnight lows as well for the East Coast, South Central states as well. Texas record heat, no question, for Friday, Shabbos, Sunday, by the way, the East Coast, the real record heat comes in on Sunday for much of the East Coast as temperatures warm into the 60s and 70s, record warmth all over the place Sunday before a drastic cold front comes through for the East Coast. Now, now that I've gone, gone off topic a little bit, I wanted to talk about the Midwest, but we're on the East Coast. I wanted to mention one little thing here, because you're not going to hear this in the forecasts at all, but it's for those weather buffs and weather enthusiasts just this is an important one there's one computer model one computer model that is forecasting that just started to forecast a substantial amount of snow for the Baltimore area Sunday evening into Sunday night that's that means after the strong cold front pushes through the storm system in the Midwest this is not can, this is not the storm system in the Midwest that's going to be pushing through over the weekend a secondary area of low pressure will be developing, possibly producing substantial amounts of snow. However, meteorologists of the National Weather Service strongly question this and are skeptical because the overall weather map on Sunday evening with subtropical high pressure uh, it just doesn't usually produce substantial snow, especially since temperatures are going to be so warm before the ground temperatures just might be too warm. But it's certainly noteworthy of pointing this out. And in addition, additional since then, since this time, there have been additional computer models that have been forecasting snowfall accumulations. And at this point, it appears likely for the Baltimore area, just the substantial snow is something that is only being forecasted by one model. I happen to be very well aware that storms over the mid-Atlantic area sometimes blow up and it's something that is worthy certainly to keep an eye on especially for weather enthusiasts uh, it, as we've pointed out in the past coastal storms are always something that could blow up and especially in this type of a situation where we have some brutal Arctic air that's colliding with subtropical heat I mean to tell you the truth this is almost like a fantasy for me I mean we have 
major Arctic air temperatures dropping to 30 below zero in Minnesota. We're back into the Midwest right now. 30 below zero in Minnesota statewide, 20 to 30 below zero for overnight lows in the Minnesota area. That's the type of Arctic high. Temperatures will be even dropping below zero significantly below zero for parts of the Chicago area. Not O'Hare, even O'Hare Airport is possible, but other parts, temperatures really might be dipping down to 10 below zero, I think. I think it might be 10 below zero, especially with the snow, and if we do get strong radi radiational cooling, there's a, really a good chance for this to be happening, uh, perhaps even Sunday night. So we have Arctic air, big time Arctic air, and it's colliding not just with warm air, but with unseasonably warm air, even record warmth. It would not be surprising at all for temperatures to hit somewhere in the U.S. into the 90s. Now, usually, it's pretty clear whether this is going to happen in Texas or Florida. Which state has the highest potential for temperatures to hit 90 degrees? So, usually, it's going to end up being Texas. Usually, the warmest state this time of the year is Florida, with high temperatures in the lower or mid-80s. But if it, not mid-80s, low-80s, sometimes even only upper 70s. But if there is to be a 90 degree high temperature, it would occur in Texas, usually. In this type of a situation, however, that's not so simple. Uh, Florida's going to be becoming very close, very close to 90 degrees, and there could even be a few isolated spots which do hit 90 degrees. As humid as Florida is, the humidity is not on par with what it is in the summer. Therefore, there is more variability in high temperatures than there is in the summer. So there are currently forecast highs in the upper 80s for the western parts of the Florida area. So it would not be surprising to see a few spots get into the low 90s. Texas also, temperatures are forecast to go into the 80s. And again, would not be surprising at all to see highs in the 90s. In fact, I would be more surprised if we don't see a high temperature somewhere in the U.S., Per, in Texas or Florida of hitting 90 degrees, uh, maybe 89, 90 degrees or so for this upcoming weekend. Uh, so this is certainly major stuff and we have dew points in the Houston, Texas area going into the low 70s. Galveston, Texas for sure, dew points 70 degrees and higher. That's the type of moisture that's colliding in with this Arctic air. But here's another thing, even before this storm develops and really gathers what we usually refer to as copious amounts of Gulf moisture that's gathered ahead of the system. The system already is a powerhouse rainmaker over in Arizona. And I only know that it's major rain. Major rain is occurring. These two There's two storm systems that are colliding, which will be producing a major winter storm here in the Midwest. Each one is significant in its own right. We have one that's coming out of Alaska, a strong storm system over the Pacific Northwest. Another one off, which has been bom like bombarding the Southern California, Arizona area, coming off of the warmer, the, I don't know, off the Pacific Ocean, going over the warm waters of the Gulf of California. And that one is headed over to the northeast and will be colliding right here over the Midwest and that's where this storm is going to blow up. So we have the Gulf moisture, we have moisture even before that, tons of it. And you know the feeling that I get is that this is not even the type of system that will be deteriorating over the, the Rockies because it's kind of going pretty far south before it turns northeast. And I'm referring to that southern system. The only twist to this is that in order for all of this to happen, the southern system has to go ahead first. It has to hit the Midwest a little bit before the northern system. Then we get blasted between the two. They kind of will be, will be colliding together, but if they actually collide at the same time, there may not be as much snow here in the Midwest. So. If we take a look, let's not talk about the numbers just yet, but let's just speak about all of the ingredients coming together. In terms of the barometric pressure, to me, it doesn't really look so impressive. 29.6, it also doesn't sound like it's going to be so focused and centered, which is a little bit disappointing to me. I hope I'm misreading that. I really hope that I'm misreading that. And uh, <laughs> But... On the upside, for those that love the storms, on the upside is that we have 
arc, the gradient, the, the pressure gradient is going to be intense as a high pressure system, a strong high pressure of 30.5 starts to move into the Midwest. This is Arctic high pressure. And sometimes in order to uh, determine whether a storm is strong or not, it might actually be more accurate to look at the relative pressure, the pressure relative to the pressure around it, instead of focusing on that 29.6, which I would rather it be something like a 29.2 or at least a 29.4. But if we look at the pressure around it, it pretty much has the din of that in a normal situation. It has kind of has that type of a status. But the main issue, or the main, not issue, it's actually not an issue at all for those that love the exciting storm systems, is we have tons of moisture. In fact, one to three inches of rain is forecast to develop over the Arkansas area. There's also some severe weather potential, of course, whenever these types of systems happen. Uh, We actually have seen a record-breaking tornado month. A record-breaking tornado month. I believe there's been more tornadoes this year in the month of December than ever for the United States. And this is going to be, once again, another severe weather risk day for tomorrow and again for Shabbos. Uh, certainly something, but the, the flooding the flooding is more of significance and higher confidence in those heavy rains occurring. Uh, some of the energy, by the way, from this storm system out west... From December 21st to December 28th, some of these places out west have seen 130-some inches of snow. Can you believe this? 130-some inches of snow. You just have to look it up. These are the charts. I kind of wanted to focus more in the Midwest, but there really is a lot going on. And the unseasonable, record-breaking warmth and humidity of the East Coast is of great interest. It really is. It's something which is phenomenal this time of the year to see such warmth occurring 70s at night in the mid-Atlantic area. That warmth is just south of Baltimore, and it it's just south of there. It's not quite there right now, but it, again, will be moving north over the weekend. We have another concern to speak about as well, and that's a rapid freeze-up that's going to be occurring for areas south of the winter storm, which we haven't even spoken about yet. But that's going to be taking place for areas like Cincinnati, Ohio, perhaps Columbus, maybe Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as well, as temperatures go crashing. And it's not common to hear a a rapid freeze warning or something like that from the National Weather Service, but this is a possibility. We also have freeze watches in effect right now as temperatures plummet 50 degrees in Texas over the weekend. That's a freeze watch. In temperatures, wind chills will be dropping below zero in Arkansas for the second half of the weekend. Wind chills well below zero, even temperatures below zero here in the Chicago area. It's possible, it, it's more than just possible, especially on Monday morning, as we have some of those suburbs, places west of the Fox River Valley, sees very intense radiational cooling. Now let's go over and talk about the winter storm. Low pressure system of 29.6 will be developing over in the Oklahoma area. It has tons of moisture, obviously, which you can see all over the place. And that system will be moving northeast bringing precipitation into the Chicago area perhaps as early as Friday night. Now, when the precipitation rates are light and the temperatures are borderline, the type of precipitation that's going to be coming down from the sky is most likely going to be in the form of rain. As the precipitation rates intensify, even though temperatures will be above 32, we have the dynamic cooling that kicks in, and that's why the precipitation most likely will be falling as snow. That's what I think. Very, very good chance, at least. That's Shabbos morning, the precipitation will be falling as snow. By Shabbos afternoon, it's it's higher than just a very good chance. The precipitation rates are really going to kick up. The temperatures might even start to drop, and it, we're really going to see snow, snow possibly even heavy at times here in the Chicago area. When you put the numbers on it, it doesn't sound as impressive at first as the whole dynamics of the storm system. Many... Uh, Four to eight inches sounds reasonable for the storm system itself because the first half of it might be a little bit watered down. And that's what's going to be bringing those snow accumulations a little bit, a little bit lower than what usually would happen perhaps in a Midwest storm where the bullseye would be six to 12 inches. Chicago will be within the bullseye. Kankakee is not within the winter storm watch now, but I think that will be changing. Uh, the storm track probably has a good chance of going a little bit further south than 
what it is forecast to do right now, although I'm not quite sure about that. Winter storm is forecast the low center of the low pressure system will be going from southern, the border of southern Illinois and northern Kentucky, southern Indiana, that area. That usually brings the heaviest snow into the Chicago area. That's what usually happens. The heaviest snow occurs about 120 miles northwest of the center. Now, now that I've said that, you have to think it through. And we have a little bit of a question over here, a little bit of a kasha. Because Chicago is a little bit more than 120 miles from those areas. But nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, Chicago is forecast to be in the bullseye of this heavy snow. Also, the, there's another bullseye occurring, which will be over in the Iowa, Illinois area, where 12 to 18 inches, possibly even up to 2 feet, says AccuWeather. That's a possibility, says AccuWeather. That could be occurring. Now, we want to talk about the local Chicago area. The local Chicago area has something really unique, really unique right now. And it's not the fact that we're going to have lake enhancement. That's the general, that's the general story. But the water temperatures on the lake are much warmer than usual. And this is a true Arctic air mass. This means that lake in, uh, you know, you have to think about it. Let's put it like this. The lake effect snow bands that will be occurring as the storm departs is going to be much heavier than usual. In terms of lake enhancement, there also is expected to be instability, and I believe that's because of the warmer water temperatures than usual. Instability means there is a chance for thunder and lightning. There is a chance for thunder and lightning in the snow. You know, I that's what it means. So that, that's something of great significance. As we mentioned in the past, the University of Missouri has done a study that 87 or 88% of the time, whenever there's a lightning streak, there will be at least 5.7 inches of snow. But here, where we already have a significant storm, we might be looking at significantly higher amounts for areas closer to Lake Michigan, which would include the Chicago area. The question that I have is that will the warmer lake water temperatures cause the precipitation initially to fall as rain? That's a little bit of a question. But the answer to the question is that the precipitation rates will be intense enough but by the time this all comes into being that the dynamic cooling will produce snow. That's what will be happening. Now in the beginning we're going to see a rain to a water a snow to water ratio of 10 to 1 but as the storm departs that's going to increase 18 to 1. That's uh, because of the really cold temperatures. We also have a very dry air mass coming in. That means the cutoff line on the northern edge of the heavy snow, the northern edge of the snow in general, is going to be intense, an intense cutoff. Chicago is not within this question mark. We're not anywhere near the cutoff. Places like Milwaukee, those meteorologists are going to have to deal with that question of what's going to be happening in Milwaukee, what's going to be happening north of Milwaukee. It's going to be a sharp cutoff going from very heavy snowfall totals to just nothing. Des Moines, Iowa, also, they're going to have to deal with that cutoff. Chicago is not going to have to deal with that. If anything, Chicago is going to have to deal with the other issue, the rain and snow line. But it doesn't even look like Chicago is going to have to deal with that. It really looks like the bullseye is right here over in the Chicago area. Perhaps Kankakee is going to have to deal with that rain and snow line. Wow, I've been talking for 18 minutes already. All right. Uh, we have, again, we mentioned the Arctic high pressure moving in 30.5. The winds are going to be quite strong, especially Saturday evening into Motei Shabbos Saturday night, picking up wind gusts 35 to 40 miles per hour. And Sunday, temperatures are just going to be so cold with highs in the teens. And those wind chills are going to be r really way, way, way down. Snowfall totals, again, 4 to 8 inches sounds reasonable. I like the 6 to 12 for areas away from the lake, and I don't really want to put a number for areas near the lake because it's impossible to do that. Uh, just We really don't know what's going to be happening exactly because there's so many ingredients. They have not come together. The storm is still over 1,000 miles away, and there's so many components to it that... You know, there's still a lot that could happen between now and then. Those numbers could really go up very significantly. And, you know, when you look at a regular storm, climatology tells us that generally the bullseye here in the Midwest is 6 to 12 inches. One has to ask the following question, though. Normally, 
in climatology also, in the normal situation, there's not record warmth with such bitter cold colliding. It happens, but it's not really normal. So one would think that those snowfall totals should be a little bit higher than whatever normal is. Now, to counteract that, we have temperatures are also going to be a little bit warmer at the start of the storm. In fact, temperatures are going to be above 32. So when all is said and done, let's just say the general Chicago area, we'll put it at 4 to 12 inches, but areas near the lake, possibly higher amounts for areas near the lake and possibly higher amounts everywhere. That's a good possibility. If any thunder should develop, then, you know, it's a whole different ball game. Then we are going to see higher snow totals uh, without a doubt. And really, the Kankakee area, has to deal with more of that snow rain line. Uh, you know, next week we're going to see a little bit of a warm-up in the mid part of the week, then another blast of Arctic air comes in, and I saw that there's another storm well, that's going to be developing uh, over the Texas area on Wednesday, and one has to wonder what's going to be happening with that system. Will that be taking a track along the Gulf Coast, or will that be moving in northeast again and affecting the Midwest? We do have chances for snow either way. There'll be at least a light snow, a good chance for a light snow on Thursday into Thursday night. At least light snow showers, and in regards to whether it's something heavier, that low pressure system developing in Texas is what's going to have to be monitored. I think the real, if there's any real surprises, it would happen in Baltimore. Sunday evening, should that snowstorm explode that's not in the forecast but it is a possibility that there might be an explosion of a snowstorm for the local Baltimore area I don't think areas further north for the local Baltimore area there might be substantial snow that's something to look out for and the record warmth just the record warmth in Baltimore it's just something it's it's just so amazing that it might actually it's not 70 degrees at night, Saturday night. It's just uh, like, wow. <laughs> wow. It's... And I want to point out another wow is that the drought conditions are, are on a serious mahalach right now. It's to be ending completely. There's just been so much snow, 130-some inches. Even Southern California, even those areas, the rain and the snow has just been so intense. It's it's really good news for them. For all people, it's good news out there because there's been a very severe drought. Here in the Midwest, the weather enthusiasts could just roar away and jump away with excitement. And it's a real blessing. It's a real blessing for weather enthusiasts that we have all of these computer models so we could appreciate. We could appreciate the storm even ahead of time. Otherwise, it's just a plain, it might just be a plain simple snow that we don't even know all the like awesomeness to this thing. We have one system from Alaska and one thing. It's really anything could happen in this type of a system. If there was to be a watch and warning system for the purpose not of these of danger and stuff like that, if it was just for the purpose of creating weather excitement, I would create a completely different system and issue a completely different type of a watch here because of the potential of what could happen, and that's what makes this so exciting. So 4 to 8 inches or 4 to 12 inches, 6 to whatever you want to say, it's a different type of a 4 to 12 or 6 to 12 or 4 to 8 than what would be occurring if this low pressure system would just be coming out of the plains and just a plain old thing. This is a little bit different because there's so much more potential. There already is the rain. There already is heavy rain. It's a thousand miles away and it's just going to get worse. And the whole question is how exactly is it going to collide? The storm could also always fall apart. You know, that could happen. Uh, I remember 1996, something like this, and the storm looked like it was going to fall apart at the last minute and the snow forecasts were canceled. And then the storm exploded right over the St. Louis area, and there was thunder and lightning. Everyone, I wish you a wonderful shop. It's a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the weather. Uh, it, you actually, this is, you know, we went through a record, the latest measurable snow ever here in the Chicago area, and we're about to break a record for the most snow ever on January 1st. And I just enjoy. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful evening.